What's up YouTube? Scott, Scotty Tradition, back with another video. Um, finally going to do my 2020 year in review video. Uh, 2020 was an odd year for many of us um, who have been collecting for a while. Um, obviously, it started out fairly normal, you know, January, February. Uh, and then once late March hit, it kind of, you know, with COVID and everything, it kind of changes the way, at least at the time, a lot of us collected. Um, and I know me personally, I kind of pulled back a little bit during that time. You know, you, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, what was going on. Um, and then lo and behold, the, the sports card market kind of went off on its own and just went crazy, basically. Um, and then that kind of changed the way that a lot of people uh, collected and kind of the way we look at our collections in general right now. So, yeah, it was a very, very interesting year. Um I actually tallied up um, <laughs> everything that I bought and sold last year, and uh, believe it or not, I after you took everything away that I sold last year, I only gained four. I only spent about four hundred dollars all of last year on sports cards, which is pretty crazy. Um, I mean, I usually have not been a seller, but you know, with the you know meteoric rise of some of the prices last year, um, it was hard not to move some stuff and. Um, there were some pretty iconic cards that I let go of, um, but it helped me buy everything that I'll be showing you uh, right here, and it also helped me buy some other stuff and, you know, put some money on my house and things like that as well. Um, and I still do have a pretty awesome collection, so very happy with what I have. Um, and pretty much everything I bought last year, I just I really like. You know, I didn't buy stuff just to buy, you know, just because I thought it might be a good value. I bought stuff that I genuinely liked. And that fits my collection. And if you do that, you know, you really can't go wrong. So, um, so now here we sit in 2021 in February. And, you know, <laughs> some of the prices have gone even more crazy. Um, as I'll kind of hint at as I go through some of the stuff. So, uh, so let's kind of go through uh, what my 2020 was like. Um, I don't really recall what my goals were. Um, I'm sure I have a goals video somewhere. I know I wanted to pick up a Ty Cobb uh, T206 red background at some point. Um, last year. I, I'm pretty sure that was at least one of my goals. Um, and, well, I didn't quite pick up a red background Ty Cobb, but I did pick up a Ty Cobb, so we'll kind of get into that as well. Um, so let's go back to January. Um, my very first pickup of the year was this card. The 1972 Tops. Cecil Cooper and Carlton Fisk rookie card in the grade of an eight. Picked this up from uh, Brian Marcy at Scottsdale Sports Cards. And really a beautiful card. Um, really decent centering. Um, so many people buy this for the Carlton Fisk. I bought it for the Cecil Cooper, the man in the middle. Um, he's actually part of the all-time Brewer set. And I'm almost finished with that set. I just have, I think I just have one card left, and that's the Jeff Jenkins, which I have not been able to find graded. Nor do I feel like sending one off for uh, an obscene sum of money to get graded. That's something I'll have to add in the future. But um, I'm, for all intents and purposes, almost done with that set. Um, so I did have to pick up the Cooper. And this is Cecil Cooper's rookie card. And it's also part of the Fisk rookie card. So again, I was happy to grab that one. That was my very first pickup of 2020. Um, and then next, next I picked up, um, again, kind of focusing on the local, more regional cards here. Uh, the Junior Bridgman, you can see it in the tall boy holder in the grade of an 8. Uh, this goes to the all-time buck set. This is when cards were still relatively cheap, believe it or not, in January of 2020. But look at that awesome mutton chop kind of look. Just pretty sweet. So I was happy to grab that Bridgman. Had been looking for this one graded for a while. And then finally was able to get it in 2020. Um, then I <laughs> picked up something kind of unique here. Uh, this is a Star Trek uh, Captain's card. Um, I thought it would be kind of a cool buy. I'm a huge fan of the Star Trek series, so this card shows all five captains from all the five main series. Uh, and you can see they have uniform swatches as well. You can take a look at the back. These were numbered out of 200. Very cool. I actually picked up two of these and actually sold one uh, last year. Uh, did pretty well on it as well. So, kind of a cool non-sports card pickup there. Let me move these forward a little bit. All right. And then um, my last pickup for the month of January last year 
Let me move that a little bit. Was this guy? You might have heard of him, the Greek freak Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, won his second MVP last year. Um, this is the Cornerstones card downtown. Just I really like these cards. Like you could actually, it's hard to tell, but now you can kind of see it in the light there. These cards actually are like foil, and they do have some shine to them. Um, but if you're just looking at them kind of straight on, it's hard to tell. They kind of almost look like paper, but they do have some shine. Um, just always a big fan of these cards. And I was able to grab this one in a 10 back in January. So super cool there. Uh, and then February came. And I only picked up one card last February. And this is it. The T206 Ty Cobb. Uh, this is the green background. I wanted a red, but a chance to grab the green presented itself, and so I did. I bought this uh, from one of the members of uh, Tobacco Row, which is a Facebook group. Did a direct deal with him. Look at that card. Uh, there is some creasing in it. That's why it's a PSA 1. This is the uh, Piedmont version. Take a look at the back. And otherwise, great color, uh, great centering. Just super happy to even be able to have this card right here. You can see, uh, still a pretty darn good eye appeal card, even with the creasing. So uh, instead of a red, I got the green. Still would like a red, but, you know, prices have kind of left the stratosphere on Ty Cobb um, at the moment. So that was my only pickup for February, but that was a pretty big card uh, to pick up. And um, now I did sell some stuff. Uh, around this time as well, if I remember right, to try to get that Cobb. I know I sold my 89 Upper Deck Griffey PSA 10 last year, which if I would have held it this year, it would have even been... I mean, <laughs> I bought the card for like 350 bucks, and I think I sold it for like around 14 or 1500 last year, but now it's like a $6,000 card or $5,000 card. So um, just kind of crazy where some of the prices have gone. But at the time, it did kind of help me get into this Ty Cobb green. So it's not all lost, you know what I mean? I just kind of shifted around a few things there. Personally, I'd rather have a card, a uh, Ty Cobb, than a Griffey. Griffey, you know, the 89 Griffey came out when I was about six years old, so it's not super iconic to me like it is to so many people. Um, I'm, I was a little bit late to the party since I was born in 83. But not bad. I was really happy to grab that uh, Cobb last year. Um, and then March came along, and I kind of took a little bit of a break in March um, of last year. Let's move some of these cards out of the way here. Um, after picking up that, that Cobb, I kind of took a little bit of a break. But I was able to get some nice uh, MLB Hall of Fame rookies. Here's the Rod Carew rookie in the grade of a three. But take a look at that three. How beautiful is that for only a PSA three? Great centering. Just an awesome looking car. Look at the back. Looks pretty darn good too. So that was one of my March pickups from last year. And then I was also able to grab the Joe Morgan. These were very reasonable priced for low to mid grade last year. And now these have all shot up as well. Here's the Joe Morgan rookie in a five and a half. Was happy to grab that one and then I picked up a couple modern pickups last year in March getting excited for the baseball season um, here's a master and apprentice with Yount and Yelich very cheap pickup these are numbered out of 99 but really kind of a cool product you can see like the Milwaukee uh, shoreline in the background with the art museum back there pretty neat card um, and then I picked up the uh, atomic rookie card Franchise favorites of Keston Hira. Just look at the shine on that. What a beautiful card. Sort of an inexpensive pickup at the time, but just a card that I thought looked cool. And then I, I didn't have any really autos of Yelich, other than my refractor rookie auto of him. So I picked up one of the Red Inks from Heritage, numbered out of 71. Just really like the look of the card. Yeah, so I kind of got into picking up just some stuff that I liked that I think just had kind of cool eye appeal and, you know, weren't necessarily part of any sets, but kind of more regional stuff um, as the Wisconsin sports nut that I am. So that was pretty much it for March. Um, then April came along last year, and I remember specifically when I bought this. Uh, this is the uh, 
49 Bowman Roy Campanella rookie. You can see nice centering there. Beautiful looking card. I bought this on an eBay Bucks, or it was like a 20% off eBay Bucks thing. And um, I, I, I was remember just searching, scouring the eBay, trying to find something to buy. And this was what I found out. And so glad I did. Those are shooting up as well, like so many cards right now. Um, and then another thing that I bought um, was um, I, I have the Packers Team Hall of Fame set, which is like 100 cards or so. And now I'm trying to work on an autograph complimentary set to all those. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to get some of the earlier ones, like back from the 30s and 40s. Um, some even in the 50s are impossible to get. But I, did, I was able to get 30-plus autos last year just to kind of start out. And here's just a sample of one of them. Um, I would bought this raw, and I submitted it through Garrett Card Cutter. It's the uh, Fuzzy Thurston rookie. He passed away, um, unfortunately. But to have his uh, autograph on a rookie card is awesome. So this is how it came back slabbed. I have about 30 more of these of various Packers Team Hall of Fame autos, but one of the cooler ones was the Fuzzy Thurston. So, beautiful card there. Uh, I had mentioned I sold my uh, Griffey PSA 10 last year to help offset the cost of some other stuff. I also bought a chainsaw last year and some things like that, which the Griffey helped pay for. Um, but at the time, I did actually purchase a PSA 9 of the Griffey from my friend Trav, from the LLC collect Lambo Leap Collectible Group. And uh, so I didn't uh, completely turn my back on the Griffey. I did kind of go from a 10 to a 9, and I'm happy with a 9. And now these 9s are even shooting up. I think I bought this for about 180 bucks, and these are up around 400 right now. You don't hear that? Then um, we have the... Uh, Donald Driver patch card here, um, kind of an inexpensive pickup. This would have been from April of last year. Um, anytime I can get a game used patch card, this one's numbered out of 25. Beautiful looking card. There we go. Then another thing I uh, picked up uh, back in April was this piece. It was a uh, Football Hall of Fame uh, autograph piece. You can see Don Hudson, Clark Hinkle, Tony Canadeo, Jim Taylor, Forrest Gregg, and Bart Starr. It's kind of a cool piece. Usually you don't see uh, all those type of players on one piece, so that was unique. Um, so, again, example of a piece I just saw, and it fit my collection well, and I, I grabbed it. And that's kind of what I did back in 2020 was I grabbed stuff that I just liked and that's the bottom line um, and then May came along and I had two big pickups in May of last year here's one the 1955 Topps Roberto Clemente rookie card in a three and a half you can see pretty decent eye appeal for the grade So super happy to grab that one last year. And then if you're going to pick up that one, you're going to need to pick up this one. The 55 top Sandy Kofax. You can see this is only graded a 4, but look at that card. I mean, for a PSA 4, this is, I think, about as good as you can do for a PSA 4. Take a look at the back. Just a beautiful card. And these are shooting up as well right now in price. And there's the Kofex and the Clemente. Um, and I'd also bought, uh, back in May, a bunch of Tyler Hero cards. Because um, I was pretty high on him uh, earlier last year when a lot of other people weren't. A lot of people were buying Zion and Ja and all those players. Um, and I kind of focused on Tyler Hero. And uh, made some pretty good money. I actually sold a bunch of his stuff during the playoffs last year. Um, and he still might end up being a, a great player. His stuff might even go higher. But um, at the time, I just kind of wanted to get out and, and just take the profits on Tyler Harrow. So um, that's what I did back in May. Uh, let's go to June. Now back in June, decided to pick up the uh, downtown Aaron Rodgers in a grade of a 10. Look at that. 
Did it shine on that card? You can hear my washer in the background that just finished. What a beautiful looking card in the 10 there. These have come up quite a bit in price too since I bought this one. Again, just another card that I just liked the way it looked. So, happy to grab that one. Let's go down with the phone a little bit. There we go. All right. And then another uh, interesting opportunity came up last year in June. Um, so I'm part of a group called VFC, Vintage Football Community, and uh, there was an opportunity to purchase a complete set of Walker's Cleaners, 1932 Packers Walker's Cleaners. Uh, and Walker's Cleaners are like a large portrait of Packers players from the early 30s, and I picked up one of those from the set buy with the group. This is the Milt Ganton bind. Um, Walker's Cleaners was like a, and Taylor's was like a dry cleaning service. And you can just see that these come with them as well to show the authenticity. Pretty unique piece. Um, obviously the big ones are like the Curly Lambo. Um, this one here goes for about 350 bucks, but some of the big ones are like the Curly Lambo and uh, Cal Hubbard and Arnie Herber and some of those players. But I was happy just to own one. I, ne I did never, never own one and the opportunity came up. So pretty happy about that. Um, then in July, just kind of a smaller pickup here. The uh, Prince Fielder Upper Deck Reflections Rookie in the grade of a 10. Um, I needed this for my PSA set registry for the Brewers, all-time set. And I had one in a BGS 9.5. I believe I still do have that one. But needed one in a PSA 10. And finally one came up after watching for what seems like a number of years. And that's literally the only thing I bought in July. <laughs> so things kind of slowed down for me a little bit in July. Um, I remember I sold some other stuff at the time as well. Um, then August came around and had the opportunity to buy this. And this is a uh, 1961 Lake to Lake Bart Star. Uh, Lake to Lake Dairy was an interesting regional product out of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And uh, this is the highest graded SGC example that exists. Um, sometimes they were miscut on the sides and you got you get part of another picture in there from the next card over. Um, but this is an early Bart Star card from a great regional set. Bart Star was a short print in there as well. You can take a look at the back. Was super happy to grab this. I uh, purchased this from uh, a gentleman from the VFC group, uh, Mike Thomas, who runs on uh, Nearman Sports Cards on eBay. So super happy to grab that card. Um, and then also in August, um, what do we got here? Oh yeah, picked up this in August. Now this is maybe my best pickup of the year. Uh, this came from JT Triple Crown. And you can just see the beauty in that card right there. I mean, really, there's nothing more that needs to be said about it. Just amazing. You can see the uh, JT Triple Crown signature on the back, number 15. So, yeah, super happy about that one, of course. And why wouldn't you be? We'll put that in the back. I mean, because this card goes really well with the other four that you can see right in front of you. Um, they're all sort of along the same lines of quality, quality of player. Um, then I picked up a uh, Jerry Kramer card, actually, which I sent off my one of my first TTM projects. <laughs> um, uh, Jerry Kramer actually sent this back pretty quick and um, was a great TTM. So I have this card here. Still waiting to send this into Garrett Card Cutter. Um, need to get a, couple, a little bit of funds together, and then I'll do another submission with him once I get a few more autos. But so glad that Jerry Kramer sent that back and signed that. I have a kind of a sad story to tell about a different player who I sent out who didn't sign it. And then also decided to pick up the Dave Robinson. This one's already signed. He's a Packer Hall of Fame linebacker. This one's already signed and slabbed in a grade of a 10 auto. So every now and again, you gotta if you see the auto available, you just grab it and kind of skip the whole TTM thing. Um, then back in September, we're on to September now, um, probably my biggest pickup of the year came in September and that was this card here 
1963 Stancraft playing cards, Curly Lambo. Um, and, of course, he signed it. I mean, take a look at what those card sets look like. Now, I have never seen a Curly Lambo autograph on a card before. Um, he signed a lot of other mediums, of course, but since I'm a card guy, I'm having the opportunity to purchase this card uh, with his signature on it is truly awesome. And uh, This is a purchase that I do not regret. Had to sell some fairly big stuff to be able to afford this card, but um, this could be a one on one. I don't think I've ever seen another Curly Lambo autograph on a card. So his Lambo is tough, any or his autograph is tough, anyways. But on a card, it's it's impossible, I think, um, because he passed away only a year or two after this autograph. So obviously, he wouldn't have had the chance to sign many cards. And there weren't many card sets available with him in it, other than the Stancraft set, to my knowledge. So that was one of my bigger pickups of the year. My biggest pickup, I should say. We'll set him over there. Um, and then also in September, kind of a couple smaller pickups. Got the G Jair Alexander, rookie in a 10. Uh, one of the best corners in football. Had a great year. Picked this up for my buddy Kurt at BBC Emporium. Happy to grab that one. Uh, then I picked up the Aaron Jones Prism Rookie in a 10. Probably overpaid for this one a bit. I'm not sure if the Packers are going to be able to afford him, but either way, love his game, love his toughness. Just uh, And they're just uh, awesome. I love the way the 2017 Prisms look. Um, of course, all the rookies are shiny from that year. Um, and then I also grabbed a player who I really appreciate, and that's the Luka Doncic 2018 Prism Rookie in a 9. Grabbed this from Bob Lewis actually at the time these have kind of gone up and then come back down a little bit since uh, I purchased from Bob but I wanted to get uh, an example of Luca I just think he's a wonderful player um, then October came around and was able to grab a few more cards this cards goes to the Packers NFL Hall of Fame set they started to add in some of these players that were like not in a Packers uniform and maybe only played a year, two, or three with the Packers. I think Stenner played three years. Um, but they threw in his Chiefs rookie card into that set, so I grabbed that one in a nine. Nice card there. There's still a few more I need to grab, like the Emlyn Tunnell rookie, and uh, there's a few others as well. Ted Hendricks rookie, but I have not done that yet. Um, I was able to grab a 58 tops of Bart Starr in the grade of a six. Again, not looking for super high grade, but I am looking for high quality cards. And look at the centering on that. Um, just a beautiful example for a PSA 6. Can't go wrong. Just a, 58 Tops is a great set for football. Um, and then I was able to grab my first PMG, and that is the Reggie White Precious Metal Gems. This is in a BGS 8.5. My first PMG card right there. These are out of 150. I think uh, football still woefully undervalued. So if like these PMGs would ever catch up with uh, basketball, watch out. And they may not. Basketball is kind of a different animal, but I think they do have room for growth for sure. And then finally, in October, picked up the Hires Rupiers Hank Aaron. This is in a grade of a six card I was looking for for a number of years. This one has the tab on the bottom even. So just an awesome card there. We'll put that up in the back. Um, and then November came along, picked up a few more items, um, kind of smaller items, I guess you could say. 2012 Prism Rookie of Chris Middleton and a nine for a bucks. This goes to the all-time bucks set. Didn't need the card in a 10. A 9 would suffice for me. 2010 Tops Brian Tops Chrome Brian Bulaga rookie. Um, he will no doubt be a Packers Team Hall of Famer at some point, so I wanted to grab his card for 15 or 20 bucks while I still could. Another card I've been looking for for a long time, the 85 Tops Teddy Higuera rookie in the grade of a 10. Um, this one finally came along after seemingly four or five years of watching for one. So I had to pick that up when I could. Um, and then I picked up a Herb Adderley autograph. Um, I had in initially intended to send Herb Adderley TTM, 
But unfortunately, he passed away. He passed away um, in the middle of my signing. So he, my card and my 20 bucks that I sent him in cash are probably still sitting on his desk somewhere. So I'm not sure if any of you have had that experience where you actually sent a card away and the person who was supposed to sign it passed away in the meantime. So I ended up having to grab this one. A nice example of his autograph. He signed a lot, but was a wonderful player. Um, so this will be sent in to Garrett again when I get a few more autograph cards as well. Um, and then last card in November, picked this up from my buddy Kurt, the 56 Tops Grayback Mickey Mantle in the grade of a four. Again, only a four, but wonderful eye appeal on that card. Super happy to grab that one. Yeah, we're going to change out that card there. We'll put the mantle in there. Um, and then one more pickup for the year. This came in early December. The Ray Nitschke autograph rookie card. You don't see his autograph much on rookie cards. So grab this one when it became available. Um, I was thinking about getting this in the new Lighthouse slab. But uh, to be honest right now, I'm just going to kind of hold it and leave it as it is. It looks looks fine how it is. <laughs> So that is it. That was my 2020. Lots of um, awesome pickups. Um, considering I only spent 400 bucks for the whole year, um, after the, you consider the stuff that I sold, um, you can't really go wrong with that. Um, was able to get some like rare Bart Star early issues, a couple iconic cards like the Kofax and the Mantle and the Clemente, and then for a Packers collector, just uh, be able to grab that Curly Lambeau autograph. It's just truly, truly awesome. So. Um, as for 2021, I've only picked up one card so far, and that was back in January, and uh, it was an eBay Bucks pickup, so I haven't spent a dime yet in January on cards, or uh, haven't spent a dime yet in 2021 on cards, just because, man, I'm not even sure how you collect right now, because just uh, the way some of the prices are, like, I'm just priced out of almost everything. Um, I have considered, you know, moving some stuff as well. Especially stuff that isn't, you know, part of my main collection. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to kind of give it some time and think about it. And we'll go from there. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I know it's kind of long, but really excited to show you kind of how my t my whole year went. And it's kind of, I think it's kind of interesting when you break it down by month. Um, I kind of wonder how you guys kind of collect. You know, this is kind of how I do. It's usually just, you know, anywhere from one to four cards in a given month. Sometimes less. Usually not more. Um, and I try, tend to focus on more quality as well and not just high volume of cards. That's just how I enjoy collecting. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, again, we're getting to be 28 minutes here, so I'm going to let you guys go. We'll talk to you soon and hope you guys have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching.